there is a final thing that's actually missing from our model, uh, from the requirements. Let me mention that, and then let's put it in quickly, and then we'll see uh, what's going to happen to the prover. Let me switch to the requirements document here. If you actually visit uh, environments constraint number three over here, we say any accounts balance must be greater than a credit limits, right? and less than a preset upper bound. We haven't really talked about preset upper bound just yet. That will be left in, uh, as an exercise for you. Uh, you can see the map, uh, lab manual for the uh, precise uh, instructions. But we want to handle this part over here, right? To be more precise, what we really want to do is to say any accounts balance must be greater than a credit limits. That means all the accounts in the bank, all the active account in the bank should really uh, uh, satisfied uh, should really be greater than or equal to the credit limits for their balance. Okay? That's what we want to do. How do we specify this? Right? Why don't we do a little bit of math over here? Okay, so now what we want talk, talk about is environments three. Right? Let me just uh, do something on the paper over here and then we're going to do the uh, rodent def, uh, and then, uh, after that. Let's now talk about it over here. And we want we are talking about environments number three over there, right? We want to say all the accounts, all the accounts balances balance value values should be greater than, right? You can say maybe larger than. Well, if you want to say larger than, will equal to that's okay. Let's say uh, should be greater than. The credit limits. And to be more precise is to say if the credit limit happened to be C, that means larger than or equal to minus C. That's something we want to specify, right? For example, if the for example, if the credit limits is actually 200, so that means your balance, the balance for maybe some accounts over here should be greater than or equal to minus 200. Right? So that means you can go below zero only up to and including the credit limit. So why don't we just say uh, larger than we go to, just easier for us to specify, right? Okay, so over here, like that. All right, let's now try to uh, see how we can specify this. Since we talk about all accounts, it's more like a universal quantification, right? So why don't we do it? And you can now pause the video and then you can try to put it on the paper to see how to specify this constraint over here. All right, assuming that you thought about it, let's now write it down. For every A, right, the variable here, sorry, for every, yeah, for every account, that's okay, A uh, for the account. And then the bullet points, right, which would just be a dot. And then we want to say A in the domain of the balance uh, function b that will be the uh, that will be the range constraint right implies b inquire about the uh, balance of a right and then so we inquire the balance about a should be larger than or equal to minus c so that's something you will have to put into rodent so that will be some invariance we want to introduce in order to really model environments three again you want to go back over there to double check about English over there. Environments three. All right. So you might be saying that since we say greater than over here, so shouldn't that be just be larger than? You're right. This greater than over here should be interpreted as greater than. It should be. However, well, since I already initially giving you the example about less than or uh, like a greater than or equal to over here, so I would say when we actually formulate uh, the requirements into uh, our model, sometimes we do have some discretion you know but i would say in the actual test or exam if you really see greater than you definitely should really use the larger than symbol right but for now why don't we just uh, modify the requirement a little bit if you don't feel comfortable about using just uh, greater than or equal to that's a greater than or equal to all right just uh, make sure all right i'm just modifying the requirement to make sure we, uh, we are being consistent i just want to stick with the greater than or equal to in this case okay all right so uh that's about uh, the requirement that we're trying to satisfy. And that's the for all universal quantification that you're going to write. Let's now write it uh, as an invariance to the model. 
Let's now go back to our event, our road and model, uh, event B model here. We want to introduce a new invariant. So go back to the machine, right click, and we want to add an invariant. All right, so you can see it's not invariant number three. We got two early invariant. You can now see the one, it's uh, here, number three. All right, so over here, uh, actually, no, we don't need that. We can say it's basically environment number three that we're gonna we talk about, right? You know, for your uh, information, for that particular requirements about greater than or equal to, I'm gonna modify the uh, requirements document that you will see in your lab manual, so that's really greater than or equal to. So you don't see any confusion, right? That just uh, make sure, all right? All right, so over here, let's now take a look over here. What should we write? What exactly what I said, right? And we just need to know what would be the ASCII character for for all. You can move to the symbol, it's only X, uh, exclamation mark. Okay, so it's a band over here. All right, if you cannot see the symbol here, but you can definitely look it up in the table, right? For the for all, right? Over here. See, after the ASCII colon over there, it's uh, exclamation mark. And then we want to say A such that when an A member of colon and then domain of B over here, and that implies equal to and greater than. That's the symbol. If you got any doubts, you can look it up in the table. I'll leave that to you. And then it's going to be B of A larger than or equal to, you can see it's pretty nice. It actually show you all the math symbol. Minus C. Right? I'm going to say control S. As soon as I save it, you can see we got an extra uh, proof obligation because of this new invariance. You can see that proof obligation there has to do with invariant number three. And somehow our withdrawal method action cannot maintain the invariance. That's the problem, right? This is something I would like to leave uh, as uh, one of the exercises for you for this lab. However, before that, let me just show you one more thing to give you the hints so you, will, you can think about how to fix it. So the hints would be we need to look at a proof tree. So double click on this unproven or undischarged proof obligation and click on that. Right? You can see the bank zero, this one is open, right? It's uh, over here, but it's now switched to the proving perspective over here. You can see there is some intermediate uh, proof that has been done, but that actually fell. We want to go to, as I said before, go to the root of the tree. That's basically ultimately what we want to prove over here, all right? I can expand this a little bit just to see the whole picture over here. That's exactly what we want to prove. And I would say prune the tree over here. You can prune the tree over here. So now it's exactly what we want to prove over here. And then I'm now going to switch. Uh, you can also the control S to save it. Okay, just to make sure you save it. Now I'm going to switch to iPad and just show you the layout of this particular proof obligation. And then let's try to understand exactly what it is trying to prove. And with that understanding, you will be able to fix the model and then hopefully complete the exercise to make sure everything will just be discharged automatically. All right, let me now switch to uh, this page over here, right? Let's now see what's going on over here. This is basically just a screenshot of the proving perspective, right? We got hypothesis over here, and also we got a goal over here. And there's one thing I want, I want to remind you about. If you actually move your cursor over the option over here, it says relational overriding rewrites, right? So that means what we are having over here is a result of the relational overriding, which I explained to you earlier. I'm gonna mention it again, but just uh, just make sure you understand this option over here. We'll talk about later about how to deal with this. But for now, let's just say uh, it's uh, to do with the relational overriding that we actually wrote about the colon equal, right? The uh, substitution. All right, let's come back here. And you can see relational overriding over here, but I'm going to deal with that in a moment. We got our machine over here. We got our variables. We got the invariant number three, which is to do with the, the thing that's being discharged, but cannot be discharged. And also we got uh, the same events withdrawal over here. Nothing we have changed. Okay. But now it cannot be uh, discharged. Let's now take a look at uh, the invariant number three over here. What's happening over here is since we talk about invariant number three, let's highlight the relevant part. Invariant three is actually over here. Okay, uh, let me just highlight the formula part, just this part over here. So the idea would be, as I said before, invariants should be maintained by executing every event. So conceptually, you can think about invariant number three 
over here, uh, let me say thinner, over here, before the event is actually executed, event, uh, invariant three assumed to hold. And then by executing the action over here, at the end of the events, we want to prove that invariant three will actually hold to be proof to hold that's basically this what this proof obligation is re really trying to uh trying to perform over here right that's something we and we it can be assumed to actually hold right let's now start with this a bit okay and you can see the proof obligation over here uh the hypothesis and one of them is exactly the invariance over here right let me highlight it over here so that part there is really the invariance number three. This part over here is invariant number three. All right. So this part here is invariance number three. Assume to be hold. And what we really want to prove is this particular part over here. That's the goal. That's what we want to prove. But we want to explain exactly why we actually got this relation overriding business over here, right? Just remind you very quickly. When we actually did this particular action over here, we said before, it's going to be, uh, so B, A is substituted by B, A minus V, right? For the withdrawal. Equivalent to B, the, uh, the function is overridden by this particular single pair, which will be uh, from A, which is in the domain, right? We talk about A should be in the domain of B, to B A minus V, right? That's what we have. Basically, we want to say that B is actually somehow going to be modified by executing this particular action over here. The only thing that will be touched is this particular account over here with its value being uh, set to this particular new value after the withdrawal. That's basically what's going to happen, right? So now, to really understand the proof obligation uh, intuitively, invariant number three is actually going to hold, right? What's going to happen is this. Invariant, let's try to, try to copy the invariant over here. For every A, and then A in the domain of B. So this is before the withdrawal, all right? Implies B of A larger than or equal to minus C. This is exactly what I'm trying to copy over here. And then we want to say that now in the events itself, action number one specifically, is actually going to replace this particular B. It's going to be substituted by this particular re uh, relation over here. It's going to be substituted by this. It's going to be that. All right. So that's exactly why you will see this relational overriding over here. So B is going to be B overridden by this A, B of A minus V, and then this. It's the crucial hints for you, right? I really want you to think about exactly what's going to be proved. So in this lab here, for to complete this exercise, there's no proof you got to do uh, with the prover. All you got to do is think about exactly what's now being proved and then how you can fix the model accordingly, all right? You want to think about the B over here is actually substituted by this particular relation. And what's really so special about a relation? Further hints. This is the only part that's being changed. The only, this is the only domain value, the only domain value, uh, the only domain value whose mapped value in range got changed. That's the only one, right? So that's a very critical hint over here. That's the only one. And somehow the prover is not convinced. Yeah, before uh, before the uh, before the events, we know that every account has its uh, credit limits, has its uh, balance larger than or equal to minus C. That's what we can assume before the uh, withdrawal. However, after the withdrawal, after you replace this particular value for the new balance for A. It, it is not convinced. It, it is still larger than or equal to minus C. 
In that case, is there anything that we can do to fix the model reasonably? We're thinking this way, really. Uh, uh, we're thinking about it informally. If I try to withdraw some money, is it enough to only say that the withdrawal amount is only an, a positive number, even though I might be subject to another invariant or system constraint where the credit limits should be another thing that I should really be concerned about, right? So guys, that's about the hints for you for completing this exercise. I deliberately try to leave this kind of a sophisticated setup uh, as the final part for this uh, tutorial series just to make sure you can really try to understand exactly what's going on. I think that would be very important. And if you got any trouble understanding this, reach out to me or I can uh, go over that with you again before you can uh, come up with the answer yourself. All right, so this will be the exercise. And refer to your lab one manual and then you will see exactly what to do for the exercise. All right, so it's really important exercise for you to really uh, figure out. All right, so that's about the uh, tutorial, the introductory tutorial video to really get you used to the rodent. All right, let me now uh, go back to the event B uh, perspective over here, and then so this will be left unproved over here, and you gotta fix the model yourself. One final thing before I forgot, which I promised you, I promised that I'm gonna show you two ways for creating an events. So far, we only cover one, right? We haven't used the wizard just yet. I want to cover that very briefly. Close this uh, proof associate, associated file over here about bank zero, close it. And then uh, let's see, just close it, okay? And then, so you got the bank zero model, you're back, right? You know, you're under the uh, event B perspective over here, okay? If you really want to create an, an events, well, by the way, how do you delete an events, okay? Uh, hypothetically, right? You basically gonna, let me do it again. You have to put the cursor to, just to the left of the event you want to delete, right, over here. And once you put it uh, and double click, it's going to choose the, uh, it's going to highlight the entire events. In that case, you're going to say delete, but don't do this. We don't want to delete this event, right? I'm just showing to you. If you want to delete it, that's how you do it, okay? And then how do you create an event in an in a alternative way by using the wizard? All you got to do is similarly, go to the machine over here, right? To the right. And then you will see that, remember we actually showed to you how to create a variables over here using the wizard. You can now click on this to say new event wizard. If you click on that, so now I got all the templates over here for you to fill in. You can fill in the event parameters over here. You can fill in the guard predicates to specify the types of the event parameters and also the substitutions like a colon equal that you can specify as actions. If you prefer this way, by all means, you should really try this way. But I personally prefer, you know, just to do it without a wizard, but it's completely up to you. Right, I'm going to cancel and I'll let you do the exercise yourself over here to put in the syntax because I think one of the exercises you got to do later, you may have to introduce new events. Why don't you try it this way? All right, so that's about the end of uh, this uh, introductory tutorial videos. And uh, it might be extended later uh, when I want to introduce new concept. But as far as your lab one is concerned, that's it. All right, stay tuned and I'll see you later.